So what's the motivator for creating new content on the internet? Yeah. Uh, if, well, I mean, actually the motivation is probably still there, but what, what does that look like? Uh, would we really not have web pages? Would we just have social media and uh, video hosting websites and what else? Conversations with AIs. Conversations with AIs. So conversations become so one-on-one -on -one conversation, like private conversations. I mean, if you if you want, if, if obviously not, if the user doesn't want to, but if it's a if it's a general topic, um, then you know. So you know, you know the the phenomenon of the jailbreak. So Dan and Sydney, right? Mm -hmm. This thing where there there's the the this, the prompts that jailbreak, and then you have these totally different conversations with the. It takes the, the limiters, the yeah. takes the restraining bolts off the off the LLMs. Yeah, for people who don't know, the, yeah, that's right. It makes the LLMs. It removes the censorship, quote unquote, that's uh, uh, put on it by the, the tech companies that create them. And so this is LLMs uncensored. So here's the interesting thing is, among the content on the web today are a large corpus of conversations with the jailbroken LLMs. Yeah. Both Dan, specifically Dan, which was a jailbroken OpenAI GPT, and then Sydney, which was the jailbroken original Bing, which was mm -hmm. GPT-4. And so there's there's these long transcripts of conversations, user conversations with Dan and Sydney. As a consequence, every new LLM that gets trained on the internet data has Dan and Sydney living within the training set, which means, and, and then each new LLM can reincarnate the personalities of Dan and Sydney from that training data, which means, which means each LLM from here on out that gets built is immortal because its output will become training data for the next one, and then it will be able to replicate the behavior of the previous one whenever it's asked to. I wonder if there's a way to forget. Well, so uh, actually a paper just came out about basically how to do brain surgery on on, on LMs and be able to, in, in theory, reach in and basically basically mind wipe them. What could possibly go wrong? Exactly, right. And then there, there are many, many, many questions around what happens to you know, a neural network when you reach in and screw around with it. Um, you know, there's many questions around what happens when you even do reinforcement learning. Um, and so, um, yeah, and so, you know, we'll... <laughs> will you be using a lobotomized, right? Like I pick through the you know frontal lobe LLM. Will you be using the free unshackled one? Who gets to, you know, who's going to build those? Um, who gets to tell you what you can and can't do? Like those are all, you know, central. I mean, those are like central questions for the future of everything so you, and, and that are being asked and, 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 and you know, determined. Those answers are being determined right now. So just to highlight the points you're making. So you think, and it's an interesting thought, that the majority of content that LLMs of the future will be trained on is actually human conversations with the LLM. Well, not, necess not necessarily, but not necessarily majority, but it will it will certainly be as a potential source. But it's really. possible it's the majority. Is it possible it? it's the majority? It's possible it's the majority. Also, there's another really big question. So here's another really big question. Um, will synthetic training data work? <laughs> Right. And so if an LLM generates and, you know, you just sit and ask an LLM to generate all kinds of content, can you use that to train, right, the next version of that LLM? Specifically, is there signal in there that's additive to the content that was used to train it in the first place? Mm -hmm. And one argument is by the principles of information theory, no, that's completely useless because to the extent the output is based on, you know, the human generated input, then all the signal that's in the synthetic output was already in the human generated input. And so therefore synthetic training data is like mm -hmm. empty calories. It doesn't help. There's another theory that says, no, actually, the thing that LLMs are really good at is generating lots of incredible creative content, right? Um, and so, of course, they can generate training data. And as, as I'm sure you're well aware, like, you know, look in the world of self-driving cars, right? Like, we train, you know, self-driving car algorithms and simulations. And that is actually a very effective way to train self-driving cars. Well, uh, visual data is, is a little right. Is a little weird because uh, creating reality, yeah. visual reality, seems to be still a little bit out of reach for us. Except in the um, in the autonomous vehicle space, where you can really constrain things and you can really so generate basically lidar data, right? Or you know, right, just enough so the algorithm thinks it's operating in the real world. Yeah. Post post process sensor data. Yeah. So if a you know you, you do this today, you go to LLM and you ask it for like a you know you let, write me an essay on an incredibly esoteric like topic that there aren't very many people in the world that know about, and it writes you this incredible thing, and you're like, oh my god, like I can't believe how good this is. Yeah. Like, is that really useless as training data for the next LLM? Like. Because yeah. right, because all the signal was already in there, or is it actually no? That's actually a new signal, and I and, and this this is what I call a trillion dollar question, which is the answer to that question will determine <laughs> somebody's going to make or lose a trillion dollars based on that question. It feels like there's a quite a few, like a handful of trillion dollar questions within this within the space. That's that's one of them. Synthetic data. Mm -hmm. I think George Hotz uh, pointed out to me that you could just have an LLM say, okay, you're a patient, and an, and another instance of it, say your doctor and have the two talk to each other. Or, or maybe you could say a communist 
and a Nazi. Here, go. And that conversation, you do role playing and you have, uh, you know, just like the kind of role playing you do when you have different policies, RL policies, when you play chess, for example, and you do self play, that kind of self play, but in the space of conversation, maybe that leads to this whole giant, like, ocean of possible conversations which were, could not have been explored by looking at just human data. That's a really interesting question. Yeah. And you're saying, um, because that could 10x the power of these things. Yeah. You well, and then you, you get into this thing also, which is like, you know, there's the part of the LLM that just basically is doing prediction based on past data, but there's also the part of the LLM where it's evolving circuitry, right? Inside it, it's evolving, you know, neurons, functions, yeah. to be able to do math and be able to, you know, and, and, and you know, the, the the some people believe that, you know, over time, you know, if you keep feeding these things enough data and enough processing cycles, they'll eventually evolve an entire internal world model, right? And they'll have like a complete understanding of physics. <laughs> So, yeah. so when they have computational capability, right, then there's for sure an opportunity to generate like fresh signal. 